What's up all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I get to talk about my top 20 most wanted Marvel Omnis. The ones that I want, so stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. If you're new to the channel, we put out videos every day, so don't forget to subscribe. And all of you, please don't forget to hit that like button. That does help with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. So every year I make my own top 10, top 20, top 30 uh, Marvel and DC Omnis list that I want to see one day. Uh, I used to separate the X-Men ones, but this year I decided to just put all 20 of the books that I want, including some that are continuing Omnis uh, as far as Marvel. So. I will be announcing some upcoming Marvel Omnis um, in the near future. Here, actually, probably as early as this week. So, I do want you to know that I actually built this list back in January. And I usually do these videos sometime in the summer. So, I waited until this particular day to actually unleash my list. So, maybe some of these will be coming out by Marvel one day, officially. But... These are just dream omnis. I would love to know what your top 10, top 20, top 5 are, and what you think of my list, of course. Leave those comments down below, questions down below. Again, this is just my list. This is not an official Marvel list. You don't see the suit, so I think most of you probably know that. Let's get started. This is a countdown with... Number 20, Inhumans Classics. I think it's been long enough, and the joke has been there that... Marvel doesn't want anything to do with the Inhumans. The MCU doesn't want anything to do with the Inhumans. So I think it's time that we show the Inhumans some respect. Now, I'm not saying that Marvel never has. We've had the... Uh, oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. We had a lot of oversized hardcovers there a few years back. But this, I want to start at the beginning. I want to start with the classics. This goes out to my buddy, Gio, who just loves the underdogs. He's a big fan of Aquaman, who also doesn't get a lot of love. At least Inhumans have had some kind of... Uh, hardcover collections. Well, I guess Aquaman did too. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. Uh, but yes, I wanted to start from the early appearances of the Inhumans on the Fantastic Four run, uh, to the Marvel superheroes, to the Amazing Adventures when they shared a magazine. So that's what I wanted to do in chronological order. And there is a ton of double dipping, but I feel like that's the way Marvel would reprint or make an omnibus if they were to go back to the classics, is actually give us some of those early years on the Fantastic Four. Uh, so I do want to start with the classics instead of a modern run. I feel like a modern run, of course, would sell better, but I think most completists and most people trying to get into comics because of maybe Black Bolt appearing in a certain MCU movie um, would want to start from the beginning. I know I would appreciate it, so I think that's what they would do. And then, of course, we'd probably get a modern classics. Uh, or modern run. Number 19, Hulk by Bruce Jones. Absolutely. One of my favorite runs on the Hulk. And the other thing I was going to say is that you're probably noticing that I did pick two covers, a standard edition and the direct market. Now, when I have like volumes one through four, I only pick one cover for each. I think most of you that have seen my videos in the past probably know how I do these things by now. But yeah, I did pick two covers. Uh, this collects that really interesting era of the Hulk where we start seeing some horror elements. Bruce Jones is a horror writer. I mean, he wrote for Creepy and Eerie magazine uh, during the Warren years and wrote one of the best Jennifer horror stories ever. But I thought he did an excellent job of bringing those elements and mixing it with the Hulk. A lot of what you may have enjoyed about Immortal Hulk came from this particular run. And it's one that, I, I mean, it would definitely, this leads up to the... Um, Planet Hulk run. So I think this would be a great place to just give us this particular omnibus. This is from the Volume 2 era, after Heroes... Uh, I don't know, he wasn't affected by Heroes... Well, he sort of was by Heroes Reborn. But it was when they relaunched Hulk by John Byrne. But absolutely, I think that it's time that we get this. We've had a couple of hardcovers and, of course, trade paperbacks. I think two complete collections. They never did finish it. Number 18, Nova. Now I'm going with Sam Alexander because we are getting an official Richard Rider freaking omnibus, but Nova by Sam Alexander, this is a character that was created by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis. Um, 
and of course named after Jeff Loeb's uh, late son who passed away of cancer. And I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. I think, you know, as as a as an old school dude that loved Nova and loved the New Warriors, of course I immediately wanted to hate the idea of somebody else being Nova. And I loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy. Richard Ryder coming back and taking a big role in Guardians of the Galaxy and in Annihilation uh, during the DNA era. So when they said they were going to replace him with a new character, I was like, I don't know about this kid. But I ended up really enjoying it. I thought it was a... If anything, it's one of those stories kind of like Ultimate Spider-Man or like Miles Morales or Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, where this character just gets thrown into this super fantastical world. So I hope that they do this one day because we do have a classic, so it's time to get a modern age Nova. And those trades are out of print. Number 17, Hells, yes. Punisher Jigsaw Puzzle. I had a hard time coming up with a title because Back to the War was technically your volume one with the appearances of the Punisher all the way up until the um, miniseries, the first five issue miniseries. This I wanted to continue from that by collecting the classic Punisher stuff in here. Uh, so you have early work in here by Wills Portacio and Chuck Dixon. Uh, but this was the Punisher I grew up with, so this is the one that I want collected. Because, you know, we I think when most people think of the Punisher nowadays, they probably think of Garth Ennis. But long before Garth Ennis, there was Carl Potts and Chuck Dixon telling the stories of the Punisher. And they were killing it on that book. I love that book. Um, and then, of course, I think War Journal overshadowed it, especially with Jim Lee's artwork. But there's still some phenomenal freaking stories and art in here. You also had uh, Eric Larson step in as an artist. But I included all the, you'll see the actual content down here at the bottom. I included all of the graphic novels at the time that were coming out. And I think it's due time that we get some classic Punisher stuff, or continuing the Back to the War omnibus. X-Men Messiah Complex. Now, I believe when we did Map My X, this was one of the ones we argued about. This just happens to be my mapping. As you can see, I included issues of Cable because I feel like Messiah Complex really begins with those endangered species one-shots. And one of the things they could do in here is also sneak in those uncollected Ed Brubaker stories to kind of after the rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire and Messiah Complex. We could put them in here. Uh, but I did want to include that first year of Cable because I feel like that's an important aftermath to what happened to, well, a particular baby in the storyline. But yes, this is one that I think a lot of people want. It was hard to choose between this and X-Force, but I feel like this would be a great start to that particular era of X-Force by Kyle and Yost. Spider-Woman. I think it's due time that we get this. We've had a few number of Marvel Masterworks, and honestly, I think we'll get this before we get an epic collection. Just my thoughts. And I'm a big fan of Jessica Drew. I actually just really got to know the character in the pages of Wolverine and then I went back to start reading some of the early stories of her Jessica Drew as Spider-Woman. They were pretty solid. So you have a you know you have her first appearance in here and I think they can do it all in one. It would be a big omnibus, but I mean it's not like we haven't seen fifty plus issues collected in an omnibus format. I'm sure most of you are like, no, make it two. You had Thinker then a snicker baby. That's the way I like them. So <laughs> moving on to number 14 Spectacular Spider-Man by J.M. Demetrius and Sal Buscema. So this particular run, what I wanted to do was also collect stuff after J.M. Demetrius left the book because there's not that much in between him leaving the book, I think with issue 204, um, until the beginning of the Clone Saga, which has been collected in omnibus format. So I think it would be a really good place to do it and it would fatten up that omnibus because I chose the later period instead of going back to things like Craven's Last Hunt because I feel like one day we will get there in chronological order. Here, I skipped issues of Maximum Carnage because I think those have been collected before in the Spider-Man vs. Venom omnibus. So I went straight with the Sal Buscema artwork. That's why I made sure it was J.M. Demetrius and Sal Buscema because Sal Buscema stayed on the book for a long time and also including the two annuals. Number 13... Another Punisher book, but this time around, it's a more modern run, and that is by Greg Rucka. This is one of the best Punisher modern runs of all time. I mean, it's it's almost up there for me with uh, Garth Ennis' run. And Garth Ennis is still writing Punisher stories. 
but this one is just awesome and it's got beautiful freaking art this is the first time i remember seeing uh, marco Kiketto, who is getting all kinds of love and admiration in his daredevil run and rightly so but i remember when he was doing this particular run i'm like man nobody's really talking about this guy and I thought he was an awesome artist, and I'm glad that somebody else took notice and picked him up for another great ongoing series. But I think, yeah, Punisher by Rucka. It's tough between that or Wolverine. X-Factor by Peter David, Volume 3. Of course I want this. Oh my gosh. The continuing X-Factor investigations. Uh, don't get lost by the content, because this is when they renumbered things. So we had an anniversary issue of number 50. And then it went back to the legacy number, so we immediately had another anniversary special issue with number 200. So this would be volume three, not of my omnibus editions, but volume three of X-Factor. We had the original classic X-Factor that started uh, with the original five X-Men, and then we had a mini-series of X-Factor that had nothing to do with them. And that has a rare trade paperback collected out there somewhere, and then this would be known as volume three. Um, going back to the legacy number with 200. And I also included Nation X in there. But absolutely, I think we would need one more omnibus to wrap it up if they include those all new X Factor issues, which why would you not? Back to back, another Peter David book, but I think one that has to be done, and that is Captain Marvel by Peter David. Volumes one and two. So two omnis here. This is not the classic Captain Marvel, so not Marvel. Not Carol Danvers, not uh, Monica Rambeau. This is my favorite Captain Marvel, and that is Janice Fell. So this is a character that appeared in the 90s, and then Peter David just decided to expand on him. Um, so 100%. I even included the issues of Thunderbolts, even though I don't think he got the love that he deserved in Thunderbolts. But this is a phenomenal run. This run always reminds me of that era of Bill Jamas and him trying to compete as to which book will continue because they did try to cancel this a few times but the fan base kept bringing it back but there was a contest as to which book you would like to see continue whether it was this or what was it the uh, ron zimmerman book um amazing adventures i think it was called. i just heard that he passed away i always thought he was a funny guy um and i thought his his stories were interesting so yeah it sucks it seems like we're losing people left and right in the comic book industry man but yes, absolutely, 100%, Captain Marvel by Peter David. I hope they make it happen. I mean, we've got Amazing Sp I mean, Spider-Man 2099 and X-Factor by Peter David and Hulk. Give me that Captain Marvel, baby. X-Men by Mike Carey, Volumes 1 and 2. You don't see some X-Men titles, but I mean, that's because I used to have a separate list for X-Men. Like, I used to have a top 20 or top 10. But I just decided to put them all together this time around. There's so many good stories to be collected, and I am called the Uncanny Omar, so I have to have some X-Men stuff in here. Uh, Mike Carey, very underrated run. I think it would do two volumes, and then we get the Christos Gage era, which that could be a separate thing, but this is a series that is completely underrated. I think to me it's up there with the Gillen run as far as when people ask me, what's the most underrated, not talked about, but you really enjoyed Era of X-Men, and I think Mike Carey is the one. Probably because it was sh overshadowed by the stuff that was happening in Uncanny X-Men, because he really was doing his own thing, telling stories in the past. Uh, and then I think people took note of it when he did that crossover with Wolverine Origins. But this series is so awesome. Plus, he was teamed up with some phenomenal artists. And those covers, let me tell you, those covers are going to be hard to choose because he, uh, there were a few David Finch covers that I wanted to use. There was even uh, some Chris Bacciolo and Humberto Ramos covers I wanted to use. Number nine, it's time it happens, Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, Volume 1. So we have classic co uh, epic collections coming out of Johnny Blaze. We have complete collections of Robbie Reyes. I think an omnibus would just be so awesome of this era. This is the Danny Ketch era. This is the new host of Ghost Rider. Uh, this is also the era by Howard Mackey and Javier Saltares. And of course, um, Mark Texeria that comes in and does the artwork. And oh my gosh, his art is so freaking awesome. Now, of course, one of the covers, the direct market cover, hear me out. Let's make it the Glow in the Dark cover. That's right. Glow in the Dark cover. You want it. I want it. Everybody be freaking killing for it. I, I love this run of Ghost Rider, you know. 
Yeah, I, actually, I've had some comments lately about Howard Mackey, how he wasn't that good of a writer, like, ever. And I'm like, what? I loved his Ghost Rider. Like, I get, you know, some people not enjoying some of the things he did later on with Spider-Man, but his Ghost Rider was freaking awesome. And there are other stories, like Mutant X, that I enjoyed by him. So don't judge it just because of one bad book that you read. Like, this run is solid. Fantastic Four by Tom DeFalco. Three volumes, baby. You know why? Because if you look at the content, and I'm sure some of you will argue with me because he didn't write them, doesn't matter. It's just, this is how I daydream. Uh, Fantastic Force 1 through 18. I wanted to include those in there because I feel like those will never be collected in anything. But it was a spin-off series from this particular era, and some of them cross over into the ongoing series. This is uh, Paul Ryan, the late Paul Ryan's wonderful artwork in here. And I did want to go ahead and wrap it up with issue 416. And that also means you have to include the Onslaught Marvel Universe in here. But issue 416, by then, you know, Tom DeFalco had left the book. It was Mark Wade coming in and wrapping up this run of Fantastic Four before, before it went over to the Heroes Reborn universe. But absolutely, Tom DeFalco, it was a hard choice between that and Thor. But I think Thor's been getting a lot of love. That will come. I think Fantastic Four needs that Tom DeFalco love. Daredevil by Anna Shinti, Volumes 1 and 2. So yeah, two volumes in this. You have her with John Romita Jr. coming in and just taking Daredevil on a different path. And it wasn't until I got on the internet and forums that I found out that, oh, I thought everybody loved Anna Shinti's run on Daredevil. That's not the case. I had no idea that there were people that hated this run because it was different. Like, it, it, it is a different take on Daredevil. And there was nothing wrong with that. So, for me, I thought it was cool. It was different. It wasn't Frank Miller. In the same way that Mark Wade took us away from that dark element of Hell's Kitchen. So, yeah, absolutely. I think this series is well overdue. I think, well, they're wrapping up the Epic Collection, so maybe that's what they're waiting on um, to collect her run. But you also, the introduction of Typhoid Mary, i big fan of this era and a big fan of her writing. Number six, this has moved up. I don't think I even had this in my top 30 last year, but this is Star Wars by Gitlin, or volume two of Star Wars. So collecting the remaining issues of Star Wars, including the annual and the one shot. And I think the reason I want this so much is because I haven't read a lot of that stuff. I've only read like the tail end of it where it wraps up. And this is the stuff that follows up the Jason Aaron run, by the way, before it relaunches again with a new number one. So I think that the cells of the reprint of Volume 1, the Star Wars Volume 1 by Jason Aaron, I think would definitely warrant a Volume 2. Just because the, Star Wars is blowing up in popularity. We have a lot of legacy Omnis that have been released. We have a lot more to announce. Stay tuned. And it's just an exciting time for Star Wars. So I also want some of the modern stuff represented in there too. Number five, Spider-Man Brand New Day. I know that people are getting superior Spider-Man. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's actually happening. Yes, it's actually happening, and I'm happy for you all. But the way that I would have started that era would have been with Brand New Day. Not big time, not when Dan Slott took over, but when the Brain Trust took over. And immediately after one more day, so if you own the J. Michael Straczynski Omnibus Volume 2, this would take place immediately after that. It's a brand new era for Spider-Man. It's when Mark Wade, Bob Gale, uh, Dan Slott, of course, Zeb Wells, and a few other writers would come in and pretty much write a weekly Spider-Man book. And it lasted a long time. So I think it would take two volumes to do the whole brand new day before it goes to big time. But yes, absolutely. I would love to have this series collected in omnibus format. Number four, Avengers by Roger Stern. So I've got it mapped out to two volumes. Uncle Roger's run on Avengers was my childhood. It was my Avengers growing up. Yes, I still dug the Bob Harris leather jacket years more because, hey, I was a kid in the 90s who didn't like leather jackets back then. But this was the era that I came in and started reading Avengers in a monthly format. And it was just awesome. And you have John Buscema drawing these superheroes like... It wasn't until I started reading his Conan run that I found out that he wasn't a big fan of drawing superheroes. And I'm like, well, he was a damn professional because it never seemed like he was just half-assing it. 
he always put his best into these particular characters. So absolutely, this is the introduction of a brand new team. And he had to kind of roll with the punches as far as like characters being replaced like Thor. But then he had Monica Rambeau, like a brand new Captain Marvel in there. Uh, Star Fox joining the Stingray, like all these obscure characters joining the Avengers, but I love this era. I think this is an awesome era, and I also threw in X-Men vs. Avengers, all four issues, even though Tom DeFalco wrote the fourth issue. Getting to the top three, number three, Amazing Spider-Man by Michelinie and Bagley. Of course I want this. This is my most wanted Spider-Man omnibus. Is it the best stories? Absolutely not. It's probably some of the not best stories, like even less than middle of the road. But it fills in that missing gap between the Spider-Man vs. Venom omnibus and the Clone Saga Volume 1. It's that missing gap. And it would be a thick book, but if you leave out the Maximum Carnage because you already have it in Spider-Man vs. Venom, then there you go. This is the book that you need. I included the two annuals in there uh, that are missing. But yes, I would love this. And, and I think we've had a Michelinie and McFarlane. We had a Michelinie and Larson. So I think it's time for Michelinie and Bagley. Plus, it has an introduction of characters like Carnage. So who doesn't want that? We're going to get a little bit of that in the Moon Knight Omnibus Volume 1, the, the, the modern one by Chuck Dixon. The, it's going to have the Round Robin crossover. Number two, four volumes, Captain America by Mark Grunewald. Again, this was the Captain America that I grew up with. So a lot of these are stories I grew up with, of course. That's what makes this list different than a lot of other people's. Uh, Captain America by Mark, Mark Grunewald. And all the way up until the very end, this would, of course, line up directly right before Mark Wade took over the book. But this was my Captain America. I included all the little miniseries in there, including his U.S. agent stuff and Adventures of Captain America, the one-shots. It's a very special era of Captain America because this is one man's work, kind of like what Peter David, what Peter David did with the Incredible Hulk. This is 10 years of somebody's life just devoted to one character. And to see the changes, to see him go into the 90s, an extreme 90s, where Captain America is wearing that big armor suit, you know, it, it's, it's like he was having to adapt with time. Oh, but there are some classic stuff in here. And I don't care if people are like, oh, man, that's the Cap Wolf guy. Yes, it's the Cap Wolf guy, but it's also the Scourge guy, uh, the guy that gave us U.S. Agent. It, there's a lot of freaking awesome stories in here that overshadow the Cap Wolf story. I didn't find anything wrong with the Cap Wolf story, honestly. I thought it was all right. Plus, it featured my dude, Wolverine, in it. But it would take four volumes to do that series justice, and I think... They could do the same thing that they did with Peter David's run. Give us four volumes. and Oh, that would look so beautiful on a bookshelf. My number one. Have you been paying attention? Uncanny X-Men Volume 5. Now, bear in mind, the way that I have it mapped out, that is my mapping. We did a map my X where we argued over the mapping of it. It was a lot of fun to discuss that. What could potentially be in this book. But I just decided to go with my mapping that I have. Whether Marvel wants to do... X Factor in there or not, it's up to them whether they're going to collect the next Factor Volume 1 and fatten this up another way. I'd love to see what they're going to have one day when I get to announce Uncanny 5. But this is my mapping, and of course, this is the one that I want. I chose both covers. Uh, the direct market cover is one of my favorites, the one from 207 where he's just slashing through the paper. I love that cover. I drew that cover over and over as a kid. When I fooled myself into thinking I was going to become a comic book artist. But instead, here I am talking to you beautiful people. Now, if and when these books come out, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat shipping rates of 11 euro and 90 cents for all EU countries, great customer service with sturdy packaging and emails answered within 24 hours. They also offer a superb selection of new titles and out of print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. For a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition, all one word, at checkout and get a 10 euros voucher for your first order over 40 euros. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ting! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. 
They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was my top 20 most wanted Marvel Omnis. Let me know in the comments down below which ones of these you see on your list, what your list would be, what your top 20, what your top 10, what your top five, what your number one most wanted Marvel Omnibus will be. I hope to get to announce it maybe sometime between now and the end of the year. So you can get excited as everybody else is when they I get to announce their favorite books. But anyway, this list is changing every year, and I do this once a year. So it's always interesting to see what was there last year, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, that isn't there now. So everyone, because actually Marvel has made some of these, and so has DC. DC has done some of my most wanted. So everyone, please stay healthy and safe out there. Uh, thank you so much to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Could not be doing this without you all. And more importantly, all of you, smash that like button. I already said stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.